So I just want to introduce myself and introduce, tell you a little bit about Bailey who's helping out. Uh, Bailey is also what we call ourselves Mapsters. Um, and again, she's helping with tech today. So if you have any tech related issues, please send her a message. So I graduated from MAP um, as did Bailey in 2016. And my background is in nonprofits. And I came to MAP because I felt that the narrative of people as broken or in need of being fixed really did not resonate with me on a, on a truly deep level. And when I saw what positive psychology is about, which is about focusing on what's right with people and what's working, I wanted to learn more. I was all in. Um, and so that has continued to be my focus. I still work in nonprofits. Additionally, I'm a coach and coaching is all about asking powerful questions to gain a greater awareness and insight. And that is a part of this approach that I'm bringing to this webinar. And just a little bit about Bailey, I just want to shout her out. Um, she is currently, she's also a coach among many a woman of many talents, um, and she's currently offering 30-minute donation-based positive psychology virtual coaching sessions, and all of the donations are going to the Best Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center Healthcare Heroes Fund, so I'm just going to put a link to that, Bailey. I know she probably didn't, she's, she didn't ask me to do this. I wanted to do this, um, but to put a link to where you can check out her coaching sessions, and she's going to donate all the money for that. So I highly recommend if you are in need of some coaching, if you're feeling stuck or overwhelmed, reach out to her. So a little bit about where this, the origin for this webinar came from. So when I saw that MAP alumni were all gathering together and, and putting together webinar series, originally I felt like, oh, geez. I don't have many strategies to offer folks right now to thrive because just like everyone else, I'm experiencing this for the first time, experiencing a pandemic for the first time. And I found the situation to be extremely overwhelming. And in my work, I only like to share solutions and tools that have personally worked for me. So eventually I had come up with this idea of these questions. I was like, I have to sign up. I'm really excited to share these questions with you. And, and the ways that I am gonna talk a little bit at the end about how I've been using them. But I really want you to experience them first. So I know we have people from all different backgrounds, some more familiar with positive psychology than others. Um, so I just want to talk just really briefly about what positive psychology is. And sometimes I think people who are, might not be familiar with it, they think that it's only about thinking positively. And it can come off as very, you know, like Pollyannish. I can never say that word totally, but like, oh, just everything's great and nothing's wrong. And that's not what positive psychology is. So just imagine, I like to use this imagery, like imagine a theater curtain. And in life, we walk around with half of the curtain open. And oftentimes that's our negative or our critical eye, what we call our negativity bias. And positive psychology is about opening the other side of the curtain to see what is right and what is working. Okay, so it's not about thinking positively, it's about thinking accurately. And I think that, you know, in my intention with sharing these today is that I've been finding that a lot of these conversations I've been having, many of our conversations, coronavirus, COVID, pandemic, it's a topic of conversation. It's really hard to get away from. Um, but what I was thinking was how can we, yes, we need to talk about this, we need to process the, what's going on, but I kept going to this place of doom and gloom, and I thought how could I actually create a structure for more constructive processing experience, and what I was doing was I was looking at the conversations that I was leaving feeling just slightly better, just identifying a little bit about what worked in that conversation and what was different, and that is what led me to create these set of questions. Um, and just a bit about, because I do want to dive into the questions, um, just a little bit about these questions and positive psychology. So if you are familiar with positive psychology and you're really into the research, these questions are grounded in both theory and research. So 
thinking about the what's called if you're familiar the via character strengths and i'm not going to go too much into the via character strengths but essentially we have all 24 strengths and research reveals that people who use their strengths are 18 times more likely to be flourishing than those who do not use their strengths and there is a free assessment and bailey i don't know if you can throw it in the chat if uh, possible, to take the free assessment, the character strengths on the website if people are interested. Um, I also went back to the research on it's one of the you know, foundational things that we learn in the MAP program our first week is on positive emotions and the research is done by Barb Fredrickson. And I was on a call with other um, MAP alumni and somebody brought up such a great point that I hadn't even thought about that, you know, positive emotions, I haven't thought about it during this whole situation, that positive emotions are not just about being happy, but there are other positive emotions such as hope, love, joy, gratitude, awe, inspiration, and serenity. So those positive emotions in particular, there are a couple others, but those in particular really resonated with me right now. So being able to access and tap into a, a whole wealth of our like, positive emotional reserve. These questions are also um, grounded in some of them towards the end, you'll really see this. It's a methodology called appreciative inquiry, and it's my absolute favorite tool in my toolkit. It's a philosophy, it's a strengths-based framework, and it's a methodology, so it's all of these things. And one of the principles of appreciative inquiry, we call it AI, um, is that the act of inquiry in itself is an intervention. So as a positive psychology pr practitioner, we're all about positive interventions. So I was thinking that right now, using our character strengths, one of our character strengths of curiosity, that in itself by asking questions is a positive intervention. And another principle that these questions are rooted in of, of um, appreciative inquiry is the anticipatory principle, which believes that the way we talk about the future and the images that we see of the future, they impact our behavior. So a positive image generates positive potential. And I'm gonna read my, one of my favorite lines that I feel so beautifully um, resonates with me today and where we're at. It's by David Cooperwriter. He's the co-creator of Appreciative Inquiry. And he says, emotion, meaning, and purpose will guide the future. And I just love that line. And I feel that now more than ever, truly touches me thinking about what will our values be in the future what will the future look like not a couple months from now but we're talking years from now so with that being said um let's jump right into oh green you do okay i see the the comment oh my god i love i love appreciative inquiry it's my favorite tool um so i love seeing that and you're doing i know you and you know you're doing amazing work so that doesn't surprise me so let's just jump into the question. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to read the question and I'll share my response um, as well, but I really want to hear your response. That's more interesting to me. Um, and then at the end, we will uh, just close out and talk. I'll talk a little bit about how I have used these questions and other ways that you can take them back to your family, your friends, and your workplace. Okay, so give me one moment. I'm just going to share my screen with you all. Okay. So this is the first question. What are you grateful for today? What are you grateful for today? So I'll give you a moment. Sunny skies, your parents, the sun is shining. Yes, I love that. Friends, Zoom, yeah, Zoom allowing us to connect. Anyone else wanna share? 
that so this uh, I'll have to say Robin is my coworker and she attended a session I did that I was going to talk about a little bit later and I might have her jump in and comment on that experience. Yes, Naveen Shelter, for sure. For sure. I was thinking this morning, really trying to shift my perspective. It was grocery shopping day for us. And um, I find it really stressful now, shopping for two weeks. And um, I was remembering that, you know, I'm just grateful that we can go to the store, that we, you know, waiting in line for the store is nothing compared to what other people are going through. Um, and so I'm really grateful for that family. Absolutely. I like that, yes, allowing you to slow down and be more present in the moment. Yeah, yes, <laughs> definitely. Community, absolutely. There's so many things that we look around and just being able to shift our perspective to like, what am I grateful for today or right now, even in the midst of all of this? Family and friends and all the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Just now, yep. Give one more moment. If anybody else wants to add. Oh, sorry, Bailey, I didn't even see yours. Um, being outside today, and there's no one in the grocery store for her today. <laughs> yes, your significant others, walking the dog, Fandango now. Okay, I don't know that one. I have to check it out. I, I love this too. It gives some different ideas. Having a greater appreciation of, of so much more. Yes, there were Yep, going to the barn to do chores and taking walks. I think there's so many things right now, um, just to go back to comment on what June said, there's so much now that I take, that I was taking for granted before that I'm really grateful now. Thank you everyone for sharing. Okay, continue to chat in the, the chat box. Going to the next slide. I really love this question. So thinking about humor, what has made you laugh in the past days or weeks? So I have to say, um, for me, it's been memes. Memes that have been going around and we have a pretty active um, WhatsApp chat for my work. And we post a lot of funny memes in there. <laughs> and so uh, there was a lot of Lysol and Clorox related memes going around yesterday. Family group chats, chatting with friends. <laughs> I see people also saying memes, yes, to memes. The memes have been good. They've been really good. Facebook giggles, things that people are posting on social media. Yeah, silly things on Facebook for sure. Satire videos. The last season of Modern Family. Okay, haven't checked it out yet. FaceTiming. Uh, political driven cartoons, definitely. Yes, definitely the, the memes, um, the ones about parents who are homeschooling. Yeah, there's been a lot of things. Oh, TikTok, okay. I'm actually not on TikTok, but I've been seeing some of the videos, so I might have to check that out more. Yeah, the, there are some funny um, parenting, I mean, I'm not a parent, but some of them have been very funny about like taking off the sticker of honor roll student off the car um, or like calling in a substitute teacher. All right, I love those. They always bring a smile to my face. Um, and it's just so important to savor the things that make us smile and make us laugh. And um, yeah, I just thinking about all the comedians who are trying to do their comedy to this, no response. They're just hoping on the other end that people are laughing at them. Uh, and and I, I feel for them as somebody who does a lot of online teaching that but we also, yeah, Saturday Night Live, there was a good one of, of Zoom calls. If you guys missed that, check that out. It was really funny. Very uh, relatable. 
Okay, so for the next question, and thank you everybody for participating. I think it makes it, I, was, I would love to do this where everybody actually says verbally, um, but it wasn't possible for this type of experience, but uh, I just love that you're participating in the chat. Thank you. So the next question is, what creative endeavors by yourself or others have you found moving, inspiring, or joyful? during this time. Um, I just saw a post actually right before we got on here of this woman whose family is immunocompromised and they've been making masks and sending them out. And she made like 3000 masks for people. Um, and I was just found that so inspiring and so moving that even though she's and her family are at risk, they're still giving to others. Um, writing and playing music yeah somebody else uh, michelle you also said mask making and different ways that people are getting creative with that i also love the um all the parties that are happening so d nice on instagram uh with that club quarantine i am finding too that i'm really enjoying watching newscasters at home with their families there um, people putting up signs to honor healthcare workers and all essential workers. Absolutely. Yeah, the people in Italy singing out their windows. And I think they're doing some of that in New York City as well. Um, I heard, I think they sang Lean on Me uh, the other day. Actually, yep, New York City clapping, making all the noise, acknowledging our hospital workers and all the frontline workers. Virtual concerts. Yeah, did anybody see the, um, uh, forget the name, but he did some good, he does some good news. And uh, he had the cast of Hamilton come and sing to that little girl. That was really fun. Um, Drive-by birthday greetings. Yeah, I saw a drive-by baby shower the other day. Um, gym community got really active with keeping track of each other, creating a virtual marathon, holding training sessions on Zoom, meditation sessions on Zoom. Yes, yeah, so many ways that Zoom has, is used now. Um, reporters and newscasters without professional hair and makeup. Yeah, definitely. Oh, also created my, um, fiance cut my bangs last week and my hairdresser was on video. Uh, so I thought that was, that was pretty interesting. Turned out good. Um, student went to mother's assisted living place and played music for them. Oh, that's beautiful. I've also seen so many teachers like reading in the front yard of a kid's a house that might need it. Quarantine outfits of the day. Getting creative with our quarantine outfits. <laughs> So continue to post in the chat. I'm going to move on to the next question, but I love these. They're bringing a smile um, to my face. A patient transporter singing to patients. A jogger dressing up in characters. And this is in Mount Laurel. Yeah, I've also seen um, the, I think it's really cool, the safari or the bear hunt that they've been doing for kids. We saw them in a neighborhood uh, when we went for a walk. And I was taking pictures. I was participating in the bear hunt. I thought it was really cool. Um, and a lot of these things too, they, they also, some of them have humor in them as well. So they're creative. We're appreciating um, or, or awe. So I was talking about positive emotions before just seeing all the people come out for the first responders and um, for the essential workers um, is really a beautiful moment of the human spirit and coming together. I'm gonna move on to the next question. So you can keep answering the first question, uh, the last question in the box. So when this is over, what do you want to remember not to take for granted? Hugging. Yeah, I was watching uh, CNN and Elmo was saying he, he, there's a Sesame Street and Elmo misses hugging his friends and thinking of all those kids it must be really hard for. Spare time, ability to be with your children, life, yeah. Weekend spare time, 
the need to not be productive, mm -hmm. spending quality time with family and friends, <laughs> a thousand puzzles, days of the week by name. <laughs> yes, for sure. I think for me, it's the ease of just doing things that I thought before were annoying. I thought grocery shopping before was like a chore or errands were a chore. And now I'm like, wow, that's a privilege to do those things. Public transportation, for sure. I don't wanna take for granted fresh air and people's smiles contact with others. So I see a lot of social connection um, that's not distanced uh, in, in here. Yeah, children in public places. Mm -hmm. Just seeing people out. Like I was, you know, just seeing other folks and just people going about their lives. Like I don't want to take for granted the routine of just regular living. So yeah, I see more family and friends. I resonate with that. I don't want to take that for granted that there's people in our lives um, and that, you know, before it got, it was easy to get caught up in just life and now really being brought back to remember how precious it is. And that it's really a privilege to get to be with other people. So I see a lot of that resonating. So just gonna move on to the next question. So hope is hugely important right now to sustain us. So what do you see today? Not future possibilities, but events beginning to happen right now that give you hope. And this could be for the future for your family, your community, or your society, or our society. So it can be micro to macro. What do you see today that gives you hope for the future? Mm, how the earth is responding. Yeah, other somebody else said taking, Larry said taking care of the earth. Kindness. Gratitude and kindness people are showing to each other. So I can see that too, like the, even though we're kind of forced to be kind to the earth right now, we're also being kind to our environment. Yes. People are learning to adapt, businesses, uh, as well as people who are willing to learn and to adapt. Oh, people who are actively working on self-improvement right now during the time. Yeah, haven't thought about that one. Or haven't, haven't, yeah, that hasn't thought once in my mind. Realizing that being, produ that being productive is not all that. Yes, so I think going back to what somebody had said in terms of that pause, that we can just, maybe our society will go a little bit slower. Open-mindedness, mm -hmm. I, I resonate with that, Michelle. Most important is, is taking time. A new normal, yeah, I love that. So do we wanna return to the way things were? Do we wanna create a new normal from this and hope, you know, is stemming from this creative and productive changes that we're seeing? People being in the present right now. Yep, I think, Michelle, that's going back to creating a new normal, I think. People are slowing down. So adapt, okay. So to adapt uh, to, I'd love to hear a little bit more, to the new. Okay, I think I get what you're saying. So. Yes, June, I, our values have, have changed or they seem to at least be changing a bit. Taking time with children, taking time with family. So there are moments right now that's happening, that's giving hope. Um, somebody said, yeah, Kathy said, how to, teaching her how to be more resilient. 
And I think too, I think it's allowing us to tap into that resiliency that is already within us. And, um, and I love that being out in nature. Yeah, I, I have a lot of, I, I resonate with a lot of comments that are coming out that it's giving me hope for the future of how we change how we are with each other in smaller groups in our interpersonal relationships and also how we view our community recognizing that need for small businesses and and to support them and how vital they are to our community and then for society and our shift in values so just want to be conscientious of your time as well and go this is our last question okay so you can continue chat, chatting in the chat box so now I'm gonna take you, we're gonna journey into the future. So imagine it is five years from now and news channels all over the world, because we're experiencing this all together, all over the world are talking about the anniversary of the pandemic. What will be one lasting positive change to society that they'll be talking about? Something new, different, better? And what do you see in terms of purpose, values, systems, people, ways of working, or something else. So it's five years from now, and this event has fundamentally shifted us for the better. What do you see? What are we talking about in five years? What are they saying on the news? What's changed? Like school slowed down and focusing on social, emotional first. Mm -hmm. Everyone working more as a team, working together. People are reaching out to each other in more open ways, strengthening relationships. I think for me, um, putting people first. Putting people first is what I want us to be saying. Um, that our values have truly changed away from the economics to taking care of each other, taking care of people. Because we can't have a functioning society if we don't take care of everybody. The value of low wage workers will be much more apparent and they'll be paid better. Yeah, so hopefully changing our system. Appreciating the farmer, the grocer, grocer, all the employees in that chain. Absolutely. I would love if they were saying all of these things. You know, I think one of the one of the themes that I see is that the interconnectedness, that our society recognizes how interconnected we are and that we create this system to support that. And June, yep, June you just said universal health care. Absolutely. And that for me goes back to work interconnected, that we need to care for everybody or, or it impacts everyone. A shift, in, um, you guys are going fast, value, the value of government, mm -hmm. going back to the role and valuing of government, sounds like a shift in priorities, a realization of what's truly important, telemedicine common. Yeah, so like maybe even more innovation of things that we before didn't think were possible in five years from now we might be saying. We vote like, that was crazy how we never did that before and now we're doing it. Yes, rent control, no homelessness. That would be incredible. Five years from now, if we could eradicate homeless, everybody has a home. Um, and go, I like this, going back to something, you know, we're going from uh, big to small, right? So big bread at home, um, focusing, and that goes back to like focusing on local, focusing on caring for, for each other in our communities and extension that, to society on a societal level. So continue to type in the chat for this question. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. I just want to share. So first of all, thank you all for participating. Uh, it's what makes it more meaningful. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit and if you know, you have to head off. I totally understand because it was a 30 minute session. We do have some time for Q&A. And I also want to 
chat about how I've used this. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Um, I just want to talk about how I've used this in case you're interested in taking it back, particularly in a workplace. Um, that was um, one thing I'm going to just chat about. So thank you for joining. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm just going to talk a little bit about, I uh, just want to make sure I can still see your comments. Um, just want to share a little bit how I've, I've done, how I've used this already. Okay. So um, I've used these questions both at work and in my personal life. So at work, for example, on our team meetings, we start with an icebreaker question. So if it's my turn, I'll throw out one of these questions. Um, I've also used it when I've been talking in conversation with friends and the conversation really has gone um, into a downward spiral. I'll ask one of these questions, like imagine five years from now, like what's new, better, different? So that is a way to infuse some type of hope or positivity into that conversation. And then I also led a session with uh, team members at my work and we answered all the questions in the order that I presented them to you. And so there were six of us and we ended up getting through all six questions in an hour. And that was without any timekeeping. So I just want to give you a sense in case you're interested in facilitating with a group there was no discussion. So the way it went was a question was posed and you know I would start and then everybody each jumped in and went around to answer the questions. Uh, and for those of you who are interested in thinking more about company culture and are familiar with the concept of psychological safety, the order of the questions are really designed in a way to promote psychological safety. So psychological safety is about feeling um, that you, so you can ask like, is it safe to take risks and be vulnerable in front of each other? My, one way you can pose, okay, do I feel safe enough to be vulnerable with this person? And so, you know, the questions become, as you can see, a little more and more vulnerable, allowing individuals to really navigate how much they'd like to disclose. So that's really all I have. Um, but I'm more than willing to take questions if you have any questions. Oh, thank you so much. Shifting more for our mind to focus on hope, comfort um, in a re realistic manner. Absolutely. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate that. Um, these have really helped me. Like I said in the beginning, it's coming from a place of, you know, I recognize there's so many horrible things happening and it's hard to shut down the news. Um, but also looking at maybe we can change the questions that we're asking to give us that hope because that hope and those positive energies really positive energy really fuels and our positive emotions really fuel our resilience, which we need right now. Thank you, Joan. Happy to take any questions. And if there are no questions. We can hop off that I can wait. Let me just check this one. And I can also email folks the questions. Um, I have everybody's email. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Thank you. Take the questions, spread them, share them. Um, please take those questions and bring them back to people in your life. Uh, I think that they, um, I think that they have that uh, are powerful. Um, so a couple, I will, Michelle. I will get out those questions this week for you all. Um, so is there a place that? So just to answer Robin's question, is there a place to go for more info about appreciative inquiry? There's a lot of information actually on appreciative inquiry. There's the appreciative inquiry commons um, and that is it's open source and it has so much information. Um, there's a lot out there. I'm trying to think for a lay audience. There's a lot of academic stuff out there. Um, so I can also because I know Robin, I can also point you in some direction. But if if people are interested, um, there is a great book that right now I can't remember. It's on my bookshelf actually behind me. I can grab it, but let me just um, answer some more questions. Do I have a strategy for staying in the positive, shifting from negative? That's a great question. 
do I personally have a strategy? This is actually challenging for me. Um, I think my strategy and what I would ask of for you to reflect on for yourself is what invokes positive emotion within me? What, when do I feel the most energized? And focusing on how do I do more of those things? So that tends to be the strategy that I've been taking. Um, but I, I also think that some of it is acceptance of like, I might be negative for a little bit, like, and it just might have to be okay. Um, but understanding at what point is it helping and at what point is it hurting? So my guide is always, is this helping me or is this hurting me? And if I'm aware that maybe something I'm doing is hurting, like watching a lot of news, but I want to do it, then at least I'm conscious of it. Um, but part of my shift lately has been focusing more on what is giving me more energy in my day. And um, can I make sure I'm doing that every day? So that would be my strategy. Yes, I'll put my contact information. Um, right here. Um, let me just make sure. So I hope Kathy that me, okay, Kathy, I sorry, I saw you clarify. Once you're down, it's hard to pull back up. Yeah, so that's the downward spiral. So a way to create an upward spiral is about really tapping into more positive emotions. So it, it's, I don't know how um, academic you want me to get here, but there is, Barb Fredrickson created a, a it's called Broaden and Build. So the idea is if we can, like today, you're recognizing positive emotions and the more you can be in that and kind of savor that and recognize that, the more it expands to help us get out of that downward spiral. So really wanting to create an upward spiral. So maybe it's at the end of the day, you might be familiar with you know, writing down three things that you're grateful for that day. And that act alone can create more of an upward spiral for you. So I would also tap into what is it that, wh when do you feel those positive emotions? Is it after a call with a friend? Is it after a walk? So being able to identify that and generate your own awareness around what it is, and then thinking about how can I savor that? In the, in the moment and after, and maybe revisit it later. Maybe it's going for a walk again tomorrow. So I hope that helped answer your question. If I didn't answer your question, write it in the chat. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> it's hard when it's just your, I wish we could talk together and I could see you, but um, feel free to reach out to, you can email. Um, <laughs> it's like, are you out there? Who are you? Uh, you guys can see me. I can't see you. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. So I hope any other questions be happy to, you know, I feel like I'm right in there with you. There's, I do have all the, luckily for me, you know, I have all these tools, but when you're really in it, it's hard to remember to use the tool. It's like, okay, if you're drowning and then somebody throws you, um, a life jacket, like you might not even see it because you're so consumed by the water around you. So I think that, you know, I'm also in it with you, everybody, like we're all um, going through it, like the term, like we're in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. So we're all having really different experiences right now. But I do have some tools and happy to share them. But sometimes it's really hard to use the tools that I have because it, it can be really overwhelming. Oh, awesome. So happy, um, Michelle, that this was what you needed. I felt so energized after we did this with a group of people at, at my work. Like it was a great experience. Yeah, it's really hard not to see it. Like it's just, and I was talking with somebody yesterday who's having the same experience. Like I know all these things, I know, what I should do, and when we say should, it's like watch out for that, your inner critic. Um, 
we know what we should do, but it's hard to do it. Sometimes it's just, it's hard. So I think we're all in this together um, and hopefully have other people around who can remind you like, here's a, here's a life vest. Like, or like, you know, you're like, think you're, I forget where it was. I saw an image once where it's like somebody thinks they're drowning and they just have to stand up. Um, they're in the shallow end. Um, so sometimes it's like, okay, oh, right, I can stand up. Uh, one thing I actually heard on a webinar through the series the other day that I thought was super helpful was being able to identify what you do have control over right now. So I found that really helpful and thinking about, okay, what do I have control over? I can control how much I clean. You know, I can have a clean space. I can work out. I can sit at my desk and, and go to work and just focus. For me, it's been helpful to break it one day at a time. Like, okay, this is my plan for tomorrow. What am I going to do tomorrow? So that's another tip I would have if people are struggling is just focusing on what's one thing today that you can control because there's so much out there that we cannot control and so much uncertainty. And I think just one thing, one thing I thought too is that, you know, I don't have the answer for you, which is why I brought you questions, right? So if I have the answers, I definitely give them to you. Um, but that's where I find that right now questions can be really powerful to unlocking the answer within and just other people feeling, reading that you're feeling energized. And that is the power of a question. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. I'm going to take your positive uh, energy and I'm going to apply it to the rest of my day.